This is Scott Becker with the Becker Private Equity Podcast. Here are 15 stories that we're following today, and bear with me as I try and count through these correctly. Um, and text me at any time with topics, ideas, and thoughts on any of the episodes, 773-766-5322. Thank you. Uh, so much interesting stuff out there today, and, and some of it's business, some of it's political, some of it's just uh, thoughts. Uh, first, the m- markets point up this week for the seventh week in a row. Uh, an article in the Wall Street Journal, stock futures rise after the Dow hits record. And, and again, the, the market's been choppy today, but it's been up incredibly over the last seven weeks as people start to look for rates to come down a little bit next year and this macro issue of what goes into savings and bonds versus the stock market drives more people back to the stock market and that's driving a lot of growth in the indexes. Second, a fascinating story about the political primary system about the presidential race next year in the Wall Street Journal essentially shows that Haley, Nikki Haley trounces President Biden in a direct run where President Trump versus Biden is a very close run. And, and this all makes sense to many of us that are centrist. At the same time, the primary system is so messed up. I mean, you hear so many people, moderate Democrats who would prefer that Biden not be the candidate, moderate Republicans that prefer that Trump not be the candidate. And the Wall Street Journal sort of article says it all. Someone who's unlikely to win the nomination unless Trump somehow gets knocked out is more popular than either one of them by a huge degree. We do need ultimately in our nation clear leadership that can clearly articulate the nation's priorities. Uh, but it's fascinating to see this kind of polling showing that of the people that are winning the potential race, none of them are actually the most likely nominee at this point. The third story we're following this morning is GM lays off 1,200 people. I think this is largely in Michigan. The automakers, the auto market industry, with increased wages and softening demand, may be in for a very challenging period of time. This is on the, the, the cost of some big union victories that will drive up wages at a time when the car companies have done very well, but are starting to find things more challenging. It's a fascinating macro situation. The, the next story we're following is Ford jumps 7.5% yesterday, and this is based on really its Rivian relationship and them doing a deal with AT&T to turn some of the, the, the fleet towards electric. Next story, fifth, Listen at Becker Private Equity to our next episode, The Etiquette of Losing Quick. We'll explain this. This is something that people will understand if they play racket sports, paddle sports, tennis sports, other kind of sports where, where teams go off at the same time, but some finish earlier, some finish later. The Etiquette of Losing Quickly. Listen for that at Becker Private Equity Business Podcast. I promise it's not a seriously deep issue. Sixth issue we're following today, Bank of America jumped 6% yesterday. Seventh, Exelon, the power company, dropped 7.5%. Eighth, Bitcoin is up 146% over the last 52 weeks. I bought Bitcoin when it was high. I sold it when it was low. No brilliant commentator here on Bitcoin. The next story we're following, cannabis stocks remain down. They're down almost 20% year to date, i.e. the cannabis index. Finally, uh, uh, yesterday was a good day for the electronic vehicle stocks. Tesla jumped 5%. Lucid and Rivian were also up. Next story, uh, Starbucks is accused of closing stores to avoid union activity. The union situation is complicated in a million different ways for companies. Starbucks has been a stalwartly progressive company until it comes to unionizing their own workforce, then not so progressive. I find that ironic and fascinating, but the reality of big business and just life. Uh, another editorial issue story in the Wall Street Journal shows the uh, the IDF takes great, great risk to fight the war how Biden wants them to fight it. This is uh, the Israel has to take great risks in how they deal with things to keep the political support of the U.S., but the political support of the U.S. is so important because the, if not for the U.S., Israel can't survive because it needs the funding for what it does. So a really fascinating situation. Fourteen story we're following today is Microsoft leads the list in a survey put out of the best managed companies in America. It is truly amazing to watch what Microsoft has done over the years. Finally, uh, uh, amazing how much money that universities take from Qatar. I sort of watched the 
the FIFA, everybody watches this, uh, the World Cup. It was all these stories about how much Qatar, 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 bribes the World Cup officials to get the World Cup. And it sort of all passed me by. I mean, I watched it, but it seemed like traditional sleazery in some of these big sports businesses, other types of things, you know, sports watching, et cetera. But then I've watched this thing with the Israel-Hamas war, and you watch how much Qatar caters to these different terrorists, how much of the Hamas leadership, Iranian leadership, all sort of pass through Qatar. And then you see how much money Qatar gives to American universities. And one of the great changes that our American universities have become so addicted to money and high cost and big endowments that they take this money. What, what a mess to take so much money from what are essentially terrorist states. Fascinating. The last thing I'll mention today is a PS it is the next time I have to buy an extra backup key for one of my children's cars that key is going into the dark web, into deep hiding. I just have to remember where I put that key so it doesn't get lost. Uh, the point may be a bit, bit removed from business news, but I do find it fascinating that this market in keys for electronic, you know, the electronic fobs, not electronic vehicles, any keys, but how they're not just the traditional old keys and now they're expensive keys. So it's going into the deep, dark hiding place in the house, that, that next set of keys. Thank you for listening to the Becker Private Equity Business Podcast. I know that's a lot today. Thank you for digesting. We'll be back with you later for the etiquette of losing quickly. Thank you very much.